Hi everyone, in this video we are going to answer the age old question, can I replace the sky in Lightroom? Not adjust it, not fix it, but actually just put some other sky on there, like this one, look at it, how cool it is, and it blends in nicely. And the answer is no, no you can't do it, <laughs> you need Photoshop. So that's what we'll do in this video, I will show you how to round trip from Lightroom over to Photoshop and back again into Lightroom. There are just some things that Lightroom cannot do, it's just not designed to do it, and it's got this buddy Photoshop. It's good friends with him. It loves to send him some of this hard work. So let's jump in and I'll show you how to do it. Hi everyone, so bring in the image, it's called Sky Replacement, bring it in. Okay, I've done a basic edit on it now to get it looking a little bit more gothic-y, it's up to you. Okay, now we can't just replace the sky in, um, you know, in Lightroom. We can enhance it, okay, we can go through and play with the lights and the dark, select it, and um, you know, this is a bit of a boring sky. Even with our effect like dehaze, we crank it up, actually there's some cool stuff in there. Ignore dehaze, okay, let's pretend there's nothing cool in there, and we need to change it. It's a tourist, it's a tourist photograph. We want to say pretend the island is always sunny, not grey, all the time. All the time. Did I say that out loud? Anyway, uh, so we need to replace the sky, and Photoshop is perfect for it. So let's do a little round trip, and then I'll talk a bit more about Photoshop, and we'll do a quick version. Come on Dan, <laughs> be quick. So just right click your image, and go edit in Photoshop, you need to have Photoshop installed, Okay, you need some basic Photoshop skills, and there it is, look, it's in Photoshop. So Lightroom, Photoshop, okay, let's just do it, Dan, and then talk about it more. So I'm gonna show you the most amazing feature. Under Edit, there's one called, where is it? Sky Replacement, oh, okay. Hold your horses, you ready? Oh my goodness, like a terrible sky, but I wanted it that way. <laughs> I wanted this dark, gloomy one, okay. Uh, let's do it again. You ready? Blue skies for the tourists. Oh, blue sky. All right, I'll go through this a little bit more because sky replacement is cool. But what I want to do is do the uh, the round trip first. So I'm going to click OK. Photoshop's added a bunch of layers. I hit save and I'm going to close it. You got to close it, okay? Because then it hands it back to Lightroom. Let's go to Lightroom. Give it a sec. Let's kind of set it up the top there. It was importing it. It's not working. Why is mine not working? Wait there, waiting, grid view, there you go. <laughs> I went into grid view and back into this view, I don't know what happened. Normally it just appears. Yours might be the same, so I'll leave that in there. I just went to grid view and then back into details and magically appears, cool huh? Now, that round trip, there's two, there's yeah, one thing to remember here. If I leave it like this, I can always, if I finish this, you know, my edit's done, great, did my last bit of Photoshop. If I now go in, go back into Photoshop, I can open it up again and, you know, work on stuff, change stuff, make it edits, okay, and those edits will appear again in Lightroom. Okay, I'm going to close it down, don't save, it'll pass it back to Lightroom with no changes, okay, but if I do make an edit here, if I go in here and I go, okay, I'm going to change the exposure, okay, or I'm going to play around the highlights, or the, I'm just going to mess around with it, okay, so if I do this now, that layered fire in Photoshop is gone. If I go in here now and say, uh, edit in Photoshop, there it is, I'm back in Photoshop, okay, and look, it's all smushed down. So you just gotta be careful, if you are, it's kind of a one way street, do your final things in Photoshop, and then back into Lightroom to do any more edits, but you can't go back and edit it. What also happens in Lightroom, so I'm gonna close that down, it'll jump back to Lightroom, is that if I go back to Gallery View, you'll notice this, there's a two. Why is there a two? It's called a stack, it's pretty advanced, but uh, I'll show you what it does. Basically, if I go, if I click on the two, Okay, it shows me that this image actually has two versions of it. Well, it's a stack of two images, it groups them together. There's that original one that I brought in, and I can work on that one. And I've got the second one, because we changed it quite a lot with the Photoshop. Okay, Lightroom like, oh, I don't know what you're doing here. I want to protect you. I want to look after your original, so it's there. It's still got those lovely edits that I did. Okay, those non-destructive edits, but using Photoshop is destructive in this case. Okay, I sent it over, kept all the layers, but then I go and edit it and it smushed it all down. So that's one thing to remember when you're using Photoshop, is that if you do edits in Lightroom afterwards, it will stick them together. But don't worry, go to backup. Okay, to get out of this, I'm gonna close it down, go to grid view, okay, and you've got two versions in there. This is kind of cool, but kind of, when you're new, it's a bit tricky. So you can just right click it and say, ungroup stack, and just show me the two of them, please. Uh, they'll be ungrouped, okay, you just end up with two versions. It's up to you. That might be easier at this level. Okay, just to have two versions of it. They're both backed up and nice. All right, let's, I'm going to delete this one. Okay, so I'm going to hit my option backspace or alt backspace on a PC and say, uh, delete you from everywhere. Okay, and I'm going to open this one up. 
and I'm going to go through in a bit more detail in Photoshop just for the light replace, the sky replacement, because that's cool. And I want to show you it because I want to show you throughout this course that there are times it's just easier in Photoshop and not just easier, but only doable in Photoshop. This is one of those good cases where you need to physically remove things, not just enhance them, change them, mask them. You need to actually cut out something, make a montage. So let's dig into the edit uh, down to sky replacement. All right, let's go from happy day. Uh, now you'll see they're all kind of broken into, they, they change all the time. You might have a few other different images. You can add your own by going here, get more skies, import images, okay. All right, uh, and then let's look at, uh, I'm just gonna click on a few of them because they're awesome. Ooh, I like that one. Okay, that one there is probably gonna be the one I'm gonna use. Oh, no. What you'll notice though is, can you see that this image is actually reflecting itself in parts of the roof. Okay, and that's what's really cool about it because without it, it can get really like contrasting. You're like, oh, that doesn't look real. So what it does is let's have a look at the one that I like the most. That one there. Yeah, click up here. Okay, and what you'll notice is I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna use the caveman ways. Okay, just the slow stuff because not everyone has Photoshop skills yet. Though I know a guy who's got a course, Photoshop Essentials and Photoshop Advanced. Even if you are reasonably experienced in Photoshop, you should do the essentials. Loads in there. All right. Um, I'm gonna drag a box around, and I'm gonna drag a box. Photoshop does it differently. <laughs> Use the hand tool, okay? And what I wanna show you is, watch this. If I turn the preview on and off, can you see it doesn't just replace the sky, but it actually affects the image, okay? It tries to cast itself on here. And the more color that's in your foreground, the more it's gonna try and like blend itself on top of it. It's really cool. Makes it really believable, okay? I'm gonna go back to shift, back to full screen. So I'm gonna hit command minus couple of times or control minus on a PC. Okay, and these are relatively self-explanatory, but we'll go through them. Uh, shift edge, okay, is can you see it kind of blends too much in here? So you can start playing around with like how much the sky blends in with what it considers the foreground. Okay, and you can decide you can go way over, so it really covers it, okay? And that's kind of good when it's quite nature or cloudy or misty, okay? But in this case, it's quite a hard edge. So I wanna keep it reasonably off and the fade edge you can keep it really fuzzy or you can keep it really tight and in this case i probably want to keep it tight so it stops influencing that so much i don't know pretty believable you can flip it where's the flip there it is there okay depending on like what you want out of your image i think i liked it yeah i think oh don't know uh now it's broken into two parts sky adjustments and foreground adjustments so this is my building Okay, and what gets influenced, how the background influences this, which is really cool. And let's do that. Okay, so um, you can play around with how the foreground's lit. Okay, does it brighten it up? Does it darken it up? This one here is probably the most interesting, like how much of the sky influences the foreground. Like crank it up and it will try to blend in even more. If you turn it all the way down, it'll leave it alone. And it's not particularly obvious in this one, but in some cases it can look really contrasting. You're like, ugh. It needs to blend a bit, okay? And this one, crank it right up. It's gonna change quite a bit of my image to match the background. Dan talks a lot. I feel like I'm talking a lot in this video. I've had a lot of caffeine, but it's interesting, right? I hope it's interesting. Uh, let's have a look. Brightness, pretty self-explanatory of the sky. Okay, just lightens it. Uh, temperature, do you want it to be blue? Okay, you can go brightness down and kind of dark. Brightness up, sunny day, or at least uh, yellow day. Okay, decide what you want to do. I'm gonna go back to normal. To reset in Photoshop, the kind of generic thing to do is hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC. Can you see it? Does it to reset? You can reset it all if you get lost. Scale, you can scale it up, but it'll end up pixelating. It depends on the image originally. Okay, that seems to be holding up all right. But if I get really big, you'll start to see all the pixels in it and get a bit yucky looking. Yeah, it's a pretty big image. Scaling it down, you end up seeing the edges here. So it'll depend on how much the uh, background needs to cover. So it's quite dependent on the image. All right, let's close down sky adjustments. We've talked about this. You can, the edge lighting is just around the edges here. <laughs> it's the edge lighting then. I'd send it on and off just to give you a, you know, how it looks. Okay. Just how much it affects just the little wispy edges. It's very cool. All right. So I love sky replacement in Photoshop. Cool. Remember to get back into Lightroom, you've got to save it and you've got to close it. And then you can see it up here, importing from Photoshop, depending on your machine, it might take a while. 
okay, to import it. And up until this beta copy that I'm working with at the moment, it just instantly changed. Yours will probably instantly change me. I've just worked out, I've got to go to grid view and then back into details view. Oh, look how cool that is, very menacing. Now the before and after, the backslash doesn't work because it's actually made two copies. Remember under grid, there's these two. Okay, it's protected your last one. Okay, it's kind of used it as a separate one. We can compare the two. Okay, so have one selected, let's go to compare view, click on the other one. We can see our before and after. So this is a great shot that uh, when I set your class exercise in the next one, you can take a screenshot of this using the compare view. Plus it's good to practice the compare view. So that's what we're gonna talk about now for Photoshop because it fits in with what we're doing. There's a couple of other parts of the course where we're actually just better doing it in Photoshop. And not even better, just the only way to do it is in Photoshop. They've had to split these two programs up to give, you know, Lightroom is fast, great for organization, and uh, does great photo editing. But when you get into photo manipulation, that's when Photoshop needs to join the gang. And it's terrible for organization, okay? Uh, you can do really good raw image edits, but it uses camera raw instead of photo. Photoshop. So there's just times where Lightroom is great for a photographer 95% of the time and then you need to hand stuff over to Photoshop to do things like this like cutting out the sky. But we'll do a few more Photoshop things in this course. Have a little look through the contents and you'll see Photoshop appear a few different times. Just when you thought this video was over, I have snuck in a class project. Now I put this kind of at the end of this video and not like as its own separate section because not everyone's gonna have Photoshop or Photoshop skills. There is a free trial if you don't have it and you wanna practice, but this is not required for the course. If you are doing the assignments, okay, you don't have to do this one because I don't, you know, it's not everyone has Photoshop. But if you are, you do, okay, uh, we're going to, it's kind of slightly different. Um, you use your own image, but you can't use the remix feature. Why? Because in Lightroom, they don't want you doing too much with other people's edits. Okay, if you right click, so I've remixed this uh, image, okay? <laughs> it's not clear, but if I try to do this, can you see I can't do a bunch of stuff like edit in Photoshop. So I can't use that remix function, okay? So what you're going to do is uh, use your own image, signature edits, or unsplash, find a shot with the sky you wanna replace, just something that's got a nice chunk of a sky. Doesn't have to have a bad sky, just a sky to replace. Send your image over to Photoshop, Replace the sky, save and close it to see it in Photoshop, sorry, in Lightroom. And when you're finished, you don't have to upload it to the assignments. I, you know, obviously I don't want your remix link, but I'd love to see your before and after, okay? And just share it on social media. Remember the compare view that we did in the last, uh, in this in this video, okay, is great for this, to show you before and after, or just do a screenshot of before and after. Remember you have to go into the stacks, which is sometimes confusing. Let's go back to musking. There it is there, you can even see the little two there. So you can get to it a couple of different ways. Grid view, where is it? There it is there, you can click this two to see the stacks. You can open up the before and after. Take screenshots and share it with us. What dramatic sky are you gonna do? Remember to credit the photographer and share it with us on these places. Have some fun and I will see. If you get lost and crying in Photoshop, it's okay. It's a big expectation for you to go jump out and do a whole another bit of software real quick. <laughs> okay, so you do find it tricky, you're allowed to skip along. If you have some school or your game, get in there, start wrestling with Photoshop, see if you can replace this guy and share what you make. All right, next video. All right, that is the end of the video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, give it a like, it helps me out. Uh, also subscribe to the channel because there's lots more Lightroom content where that came from. Uh, if you are sitting there thinking though, I wish you'd just do a course, you know, take me from zero to hero all the way through Lightroom and show me everything. Oh, you're in luck. Uh, I've got something called the Lightroom Essentials course. There'll be a link to it in the description here. Uh, so check that out if you want to go from zero to hero in Lightroom. But for now, carry on. Like and subscribe.